My name is Alan Hawes. This is PSOC 101. Now I'm going to introduce you to a more powerful counter. This counter is implemented in one of the special timer counter PWM blocks or TCPWM in the PSOC device. The next three lessons show you how to use three of the TCPWM options. First, make a copy of the basic counter project. Then delete the basic counter and the logic gates from around it. Find a TCPWM based counter in the component catalog and then drop it into the schematic. This component needs to have an input clock signal. So grab a clock and attach it to the clock input. The default 12 MHz frequency is fine for what we need. In the counter customizer, you can see that it can be a timer, a quadrature decoder, or a PWM. You should leave it as a counter and change the name. Then enable counting on a falling edge with an interrupt on the terminal count and a period of two. The idea of this project is that it will count button presses and when the counter reaches zero, an interrupt will fire. In order for this to happen, you need to attach an interrupt component to the interrupt terminal of the counter. That's quite a lot of editing of the component. To understand all of these choices and go a little bit deeper, go to the component data sheet which explains all of the options and clearly lists the API functions that will be generated for you based on those options. Before writing the C code, you should generate the API files. You can do that by just building the project or, to finish a little faster, press the Generate Application button. That button does a partial build of the project leaving out the compile and link stages. With the APIs generated, you get the benefit of predictive typing inside of PSOC Creator. First, you need to turn on the counter component. Unlike the simple hardware-only components, the flip-flops and the basic counter, the TCPWM-based counter needs to be initialized in the firmware. To do that, call the component start function. You must also register the interrupt handler using the start ex function. Don't forget the macro to enable the global interrupts. Then move above the main function and write the actual interrupt handler. Use the cy underscore isr macro again and write code to toggle the green LED pin. To clear the interrupt, use the clear interrupt function. That function requires an argument to identify which interrupt source you're supposed to clear. You are using the terminal count as the source of the interrupt. So the macro to clear that source is the name of your component with underscore INTR underscore mask underscore TC. Now, when you program the kit with this project, you need to press the switch three times to make the LED toggle. That's because the counter is counting down from a period of two. It decrements on every falling edge from the switch because the switch is active low and asserts a terminal count interrupt when the counter reaches zero. It also reloads the counter back to the initial period value so the counter immediately restarts counting down from two. As always, you're welcome to email me at alan underscore hawes at cypress.com.